We use mathematics as a tool for understanding and describing things around us. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we can take information that we've collected, known as data, and use graphs in order to better understand it. We'll talk about the dot plot, the histogram, and the box plot. Then, we'll talk about how we can describe the shape of the graph. The graph can be described as symmetric, skewed to the right, or skewed to the left. This helps us to understand and make predictions. Let's begin today by looking at the dot plot. Suppose we conduct a survey of 80 viewers of our favorite television show. We want to know how old each person who's watching it is. We collect the information and we put it on a dot plot. A dot plot is simply a number line that contains a series of dots on it. The dots simply represent our information. In our survey, three people said they were 10 years old, so notice there are three dots above the number 10. If I look at the number 75, I see two dots. That means two people who we interviewed were 75 years old. Look over the number 50. There's one dot. What does that one dot stand for? Well, it means that there was one viewer who was 50 years old. We can tell by looking at this dot plot that there are viewers of all ages, people from three years old on up to 75. There's lots of good information that we can tell from this, so first let's begin by practicing how to construct a dot plot. We have some students who are participating in a math competition. So that they do well, they spend some time practicing in advance. When each student came to the competition, we asked them how many hours they had studied. We recorded the information, and we see that on the screen. We begin by tallying everything up. Notice we have three people who studied for one hour. That means there are three dots above the number one. Now we have two hours. We see that there were five people who studied for two hours. That means there'll be five dots above the number two. Be sure to space them out evenly. You don't want one of your numbers where the dots are spaced pretty far apart, and then another one where they're really close. You should have the same amount of space for each one. Please pause the video here and complete the dot plot based on the data that was given to us. Then come back once you're finished and we'll discuss it further. Here's our completed dot plot. Notice that most of the people studied from one to six hours. That's where the largest number of dots are. The highest pile is over the number four. In fact, six of the people studied for four hours. We can see that there's a few people who studied quite a bit more. We see one person studied for 20 hours, one person for 17, and a couple of people who studied for 15 hours but most of the people are in that group from one to six. Now, let's talk about another way that we can organize our information. We call this a histogram, and it looks like this. Suppose we have a group that goes to Seabreeze for a summer trip. We ask everyone how old they are, and we've recorded the information in this graph. A few things worth noting about this graph are as follows. These are important things. The x-axis is given in intervals, 1 through 5, 6 through 10, 11 through 15, etc. The height of each bar indicates the frequency, in this case, the number of people who were that age. Because the second bar, the bar over 6 to 10, goes up to 30, it means there were 30 people who were ages 6 to 10. Finally, make note that each of the bars touch. There is no space between the bars, and each bar is the same width. We should construct our histograms very carefully so that they're accurate. We have 25 people who are attending an event. The ages of each of those people is recorded below. We want to create a histogram using the axes that are given to us. So here is the graph. We have the x-axis on the bottom, that is the age of the person in years. We have the frequency on the y-axis on the side, and frequency is simply how many times it happened. We're going to create a frequency table 
and then construct the bars on our graph. At the bottom, notice that the axes are listed in intervals of 5, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, etc. Because that's how the axis is set up, that's the interval that we'll use to record our data. The first section is 0 to 4.9. Because we don't usually say that people are 4.9 years old, we would say they're 4, we'll call that first interval 0 to 4. The second interval is 5 to 9.9. .9. Because we don't usually say people are 9.9 .9 years old, we'll say 5 to 9. Then, we'll record these intervals in the frequency table. Please pause the video here to fill in the rest of the frequencies on the bottom of the x-axis as well as in the table. Pause the video here and come back when you're finished. Next, we count the number of people in each category. 0 to 4, we have a total of 6 people. We record that in the frequency table and then we construct the first bar. 0 to 4, we had 6 people. Now let's do the rest of them, 5 to 9, 10 through 14, all the way up to the end, and we'll construct the bars that go with it. Please pause here and complete the histogram. Here's our completed histogram. We had 13 people from 5 to 9, 2 from 15 to 19, 2 from 20 to 24, and 1 from 25 to 29. Now let's answer some questions about this histogram. Here's what we want to know. How many of the people are aged 0 to 4? How many of the 25 people are from 0 to 9? And how many of the 25 people were under 20 years old, or less than 20? Please pause the video here to answer these questions. Once you've finished, Come on back and we'll talk about them. 0 to 4 is our first bar. We had a total of 6 people. 0 to 9 covers our first 2 bars. We had 6 from 0 to 4, 13 from 5 to 9. That gives us a total of 19 people. Finally, how many people are under 20? Well, that's 4 different bars. 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 through 14, and 15 through 19. That's a total of 21 people who are under 20 years old. Now here's a couple more questions for you, and I'd like for you to write these off to the side in your notes so that we can talk about them in class. Suppose someone asked you what the typical age of a person at this event was. What age would you tell them? Second, what kind of event do you think this could be? Make a prediction. You could come up with anything, as long as it makes sense for the ages that we have. What type of event do you think they're attending? And justify your conjecture, or your prediction, using the histogram. Why do you think it could be this type of an event? Please pause the video here, and then come on back. Now that we've made our prediction, let's talk about the shape of data. What on earth does that mean? Well, when we talk about the shape of data, we're talking about which of these it most looks like. Is the data symmetric, the same on each side? Is it skewed to the right with a few people, you know, off to the right-hand side? Or is it skewed to the left with a few people off to the left? And how on earth can you tell? Here's how we can tell. Let's take a look at the histogram we just completed. In this histogram, notice that we have a lot of people on the left, but a few people on the right but most of the people are in the 0 to 9 category. The little amount of people that are off to the right is known as a tail. And if we draw a curve over the information that we have, notice that it looks most like the graph in the middle, skewed to the right. We say it's skewed to the right because there are a few people off to the right in this example. If the tail goes to the right, we say that the graph is skewed right. Similarly, suppose we have data that looks like this. Most of the values are on the right-hand side, but there's a few on the left. If I draw that curve over it, notice it looks like this example down on the right. It says skewed to the, to the left. 
skewed to the left means there's a few off to the left, but most of them are on the right hand side of the graph. When the tail goes to the left, we say that it's skewed left. So here's what you need to know. If there's a small tail going to the left, we say it's skewed left. If there's a small tail going to the right, we say that it's skewed right. The same is true for dot plots. A dot plot can be considered skewed left or skewed right. Sometimes something interesting happens. Take a look at these histograms. If I draw a line through the middle of each of them, notice it's approximately the same on each side of that line. When the graph is the same on each side of the line, or very close to the same, we say that it's symmetric. Dot plots can also be symmetric, as you see in the example here. Now let's try a few examples. There's several in the notes packet for you to try right now. Please pause the video here and come back when you're finished. Here are the solutions to the shape of the graphs. How did you do? Remember, if you have questions, you should write them in the margins of your notes. That way you can ask when you come to class tomorrow. Let's end today's lesson by looking at the box plot. A box plot is sometimes called a box and whisker plot. It breaks down the data into intervals that are about 25% each. Today, you're just going to learn how to read a basic box plot. We'll learn how to work with them and how to analyze them and create them in a future lesson. In a survey, 200 people were asked how many pets they have. The results were compiled and created in this box plot. Each piece of this box plot contains 25% of the data. The first whisker is from 25% from 0 to 1. So 25% of the people have 0 or 1 pet. In this case, 50. The next section also has 25% of the data. From 1 to 2, we have 50 people who have 1 to 2 pets. The next section also has 25% of the people. It starts at 2 and goes up to 5. So 25% of our people have from 2 to 5 pets. In other words, 50 people. Finally, we have our last interval, again 25%, starts at 5, goes up to 12, 25% of those people, or 50, have 5 to 12 pets. Notice this little asterisk off to the side. That's actually a piece of the graph. It actually goes in this last interval. What is that all about? Well, I'll tell you in a future lesson. Don't worry about that for now. So, here's what you should know. You should be able to understand the shape of data, to classify it as symmetric, skewed to the right, or skewed to the left. You should know that statistics is the process of collecting, summarizing, and analyzing data. Data is simply the information that we have. Finally, we have three types of graphs we can use to summarize this information, a dot plot, a histogram, and a box plot. And that's everything you need to know to get started working with distributions and understanding their shape.